So here I got a very simple setup. I have a pencil on which I rest two chopsticks and I create a very gentle incline. So to, to show that it's actually inclined, we can put something cylindrical on it and as expected, it slides down. Even if I push it up, it raises its top point and then goes down. But now I consider this shape. It's a cone which is glued to another cone like that. So what happens if I try to slide this guy down? Let me put it on top. It doesn't really want to slide. Now, what if I put it somewhere near the bottom? Surely it should go down even further. As I release it, it goes up. It goes up my incline. Now, of course, you might say that as I release it from here, I push it slightly, giving it a moment. But let me, let me do it in a different way. Let me push it down first. So as I push it down, it wants to return backwards as if it was going against gravity. So what's going on? We are, of course, interested in the following question. Under what conditions will the cone roll in the upwards direction? In our setup, we had several variables. The first one is the slope of the chopstick with respect to the ground. So when two chopsticks stand on the table and they rest against some support, and if we look at them from this viewpoint, let's call this angle alpha. <clears throat> now, if we see our chopsticks from above, there will be an angle, right? And for convenience, let us denote this angle to beta. And now we also have a cone double cone itself looks something like that and for our calculations we will we'll be interested in this angle let's call it 2 gamma so how do we approach this question we are of course interested in the movement of the center of gravity of our cone which I have denoted by this point. So suppose first that our slope does not consist of chopsticks, but it's a plane, it's just an inclined plane. So then if a circular object rolls along it, it gains, its center of gravity gains or loses height in accordance with the formula we are going to derive. But we have a different situation. As it rolls upwards, it also, it, it, it slides along two chopsticks, right? So as it, as it rolls, the center of gravity actually falls between these two chopsticks. And the cone, if initially it had contact points with chopsticks in, at these two points, now it would have contact points around here, so the center of gravity would be lower with respect to two chopsticks after it has rolled some distance upwards. So let us consider this viewpoint first. It's a, it, it is a very standard problem in mechanics, right? So we have a slope alpha, and suppose initially our cone rested at this point, which we denote as L1, and then it appeared at this distance 
L2. So we want to know this distance along the slope, but overall we are interested in this gain of height. Let's call this big H. So this is the height gained by the center of gravity of the cone, first assuming that it does not fall with respect to the slope, right? So first, this setup assumes that this slope is just a plane, okay? So finding H is quite easy. We just have a triangle like that. This is H, this is L2 minus L1, and this is alpha. So by trigonometry, we have that tan alpha is H over L2 minus L1. And so H is L2 minus L1 times tangent alpha, right? So this is, this is how much we gain or lose with respect to this picture, okay? But what happens here? Here is our incline made out of two chopsticks. So let's draw how it looks from above. So we have this V shape and we have already introduced some notation. So suppose that this level corresponds to the height L1 and this level corresponds to the height L2. So this line, so, so when you have a double cone, at L1, this line will look something like this. So this is the line that's in the same plane with chopsticks on a cone. And when it rolls all the way up to L2, this line is about here. I'm doing planar drawings, so if something is unclear, stop the video and try to imagine this in 3D. So let's call this W1, W2, width 1, width 2. And we want to know, as, as the cone changes this width from W1 to W2, how much height does the center of gravity lose? So if I have a bigger and a, more, uh, and a clearer diagram, this is my aces of symmetry, this is my W1, this is my W2. So as it rolled upwards, it lost this much, right? At first, chopsticks were here and the cone rested on these two chopsticks and then it went to this width. So the center of gravity has moved downwards with respect to chopsticks, okay? So let's call this change of height little h and how do we calculate it? So remember I proposed to denote this angle to gamma. So half of this angle will be, this angle will be gamma. So we end up having a triangle as a height h, the change in width is W2 minus W1 over two. So I'm considering this triangle, right? Imagine I project W1 onto W2, then these guys will be equal, equal to this length. And then I have a hypotenuse and my gamma is here. And on my drawing, 
it corresponds to this angle. So once again, using trigonometry, I have the tangent of gamma is 2h over w2 minus w1. But of course, w2 and w1 themselves depend on L1, L2, and this angle of 2 beta. So this angle is going to be beta, right? Now it makes sense why I decided to double them, because when I draw a bisector, it becomes half of the angle. So to write W1 and W2 in terms of L1, L2, and beta, I again notice a triangle that has one side L1, another side is W1, half of W1, right? And this angle is beta, and a similar but bigger triangle for W2 over 2, right? So simple trigonometry applied again gives me that tangent beta is equal to W1 over 2L1 and likewise it's equal to W2 over 2L2. So I want to figure out W1, W2, so I rearrange the formula to get that W1 is 2L1 tangent beta, W2 is 2L2 tangent beta. And we are almost done. So we are ready to formulate a condition. So let's be careful. We have calculated how much height does the cone gain as it moves upwards with respect to this setup, but we also calculated how much it loses or gains when we actually understand that it's rolling on two chopsticks, so it's, so it's allowed to fall in between. And of course, all bodies tend to decrease the height of their center of gravity, right? They tend to reduce their potential energy. So let's write it down. So, so bodies want to lower, lower or decrease their potential energy. So as it goes upwards, it gains height with respect to this setup, but it loses little h at the same time with respect to uh, another setup. So we, of course, want this inequality to hold. The, the, the amount we lose has to outweigh the amount we gain, because only then the center of gravity will overall be, be lower than initially. So it is a little exercise to rearrange this formula and apply this result to find out little h, but the outcome is that tangent beta times tangent gamma has to be greater than sine alpha. Sorry, so now I have actually realized that in my first calculation I made a mistake. Of course, this is not tangent, but a sine. So, so my little, my big H is L2 minus L1 times sine alpha, right? So this is my condition.
beta is angle that characterizes the wedge of two chopsticks. Gamma is how acute the cone is and alpha is my slope. So it turns out that my inequality for a condition that tells me when the cone will roll upwards is actually quite easy. So try to make this setup yourself and play around with these angles to convince yourself that it's actually true. So of course the shape for which our trick worked is special, right? This shape allows the center of gravity to fall as it rolls upwards. But I have a bonus question for you. Suppose we have a rest and we have rails that are connected not at the bottom, like in my setup, but at the top. So we have a pair of chopsticks going down the support like that. So the question is, of what shape should your body be now in order for it to roll upwards as well and under what conditions? So what shape will roll upwards on this setup? So the cone will of course not work because as it goes up, it gains height both with respect to us treating these rails as a plane and also with respect to the, uh, to the rails, right? So it, 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 there is no way for it to lose height with respect to one setting and gain height with respect to another. As it goes up, it only gains energy and as it moves down, it only loses energy. So this shape does not work.